Welcome back to the series where I talk about what it was like to grow up as a child on a mommy blog. Meet Lou, one of the first adults speaking out about being raised on a mommy blog. I found their TikTok account and I was immediately drawn in by their vulnerability, the courage they had to speak about their life experiences, about being raised on a mommy blog. And I want to tell you guys a little bit about their story today. Yes, we knew about the blog from its inception. It was something that was a regular part of our lives. There were even times where when I was a little kid, I would go ha 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 and, and jump on when my mom had stepped away from the computer and, and I'd write something silly or something and post it too. It was, it was deeply ingrained in our life from the moment it started to when it eventually piddled out. It was not a video blog, it was a written blog. It started on AOL.com and then when AOL did a lot of shifting around, she moved it to another service. No, I will not be sharing the blog service name because she was very unwise with the information and the pictures and I'd rather not that be out and, and whatever. This is so eye-opening. You have an adult who was raised on a mommy blog and is now saying, my mother was unwise with the information and pictures that she shared and I would rather that information not be out there. Lou was just eight years old when the blog started. For starters, nothing was sacred and there was that constant feeling of being on, which meant that even in the privacy of our home, you could always expect the camera to be around in any conversation that you had, regardless of how embarrassing or intimate or private it was, it could end up on the blog. Lou just confirmed what we've all said about these family channels, that the children have the constant feeling of being on at all times. And even the private embarrassing moments are not off limits. Kids of family vloggers and bloggers understand that their life is not private. Any and everything could be shared. And it was all for the consumption of strangers. So even now as a 26 year old in having private moments and stuff, I'm still so stressed about how I appear and how it's going to be received by strangers, even when I'm just having a quiet moment with my spouse and I feel obligated to share those moments and they're not for consumption. My heart breaks hearing this story. As an adult, Lou is stressed out about intimate moments. <sighs> this is so hard to listen to, to be honest. We need to share Lou's story and maybe family vloggers will see this and something will click in their head to make them understand the ramifications for exploiting their children online. One of the weirdest things was the difference in relationship that we had with the blog because for the author, for my mom, it, uh, it was purely like her safe space and her reward center. But for the child, the one being written about, it was both a reward center and a punishment center because you know that's where she would go to give praise and to also complain. So this is exactly what family vloggers do too. They go online and complain about their children. They show their tantrums. They say, this child's doing this, this child's doing that. And then the audience agrees and the child sees that. And it would be so much worse for a YouTuber to do this because they have video of it. Lou's mom didn't post videos, just pictures. As the, the subject, that's where I would receive praise and then be complained about. On top of that, like people were agreeing with her. So there were, there were people online agreeing with my mom about like with some of the, even the cruel things that she said and like um, saying that I was like 50% my dad's fault when she had clear disdain for my dad and people were agreeing with it. So that was weird. I'm still in shock about the crap that parents share about their kids online. This is ridiculous, and it kind of reminds me of Eight Passengers, how they shared, you know, all the things that their kids did wrong, and then the punishments. Alcohol culture in America is bonkers. It's, it's very normalized, and that was like a, a common punchline through the entirety of the blog, like for years. It was motherhood, get me drunk, motherhood, wine, motherhood, rum, motherhood, corona. 
This statement is so true. How many mommy vloggers do you see talking about, oh, I've had a long day with the kids, I need some wine. I've never heard a child come out and talk about this and what she's about to say is going to break your heart. Keep listening. Um, you know, like dealing with these kids is so hard, I need to be drunk. And to see like the, the comments agreeing and saying that they get it like as the kid hearing that you were so difficult that your mom needed to resort to alcoholism I can't even make it through that like my heart is breaking for any child to feel that way and if the mother had not gone online and put all of this out there lou wouldn't know that she necessarily felt this way maybe this is why it's not necessary to share every moment of your life online, every one of your thoughts online, it's just not necessary, especially when it comes to your children and how you feel about your children because it's damaging to them and their future. It was very damaging, like super damaging. And it made me feel long-term that like, the, <laughs> the only way people would be able to enjoy me is if I hung out with people who were under the influence of some. So many parents need to hear what Lou just said. So many parents need to hear this. Having a glass of wine or a beer at the end of the day is not necessarily a bad thing. What makes it a bad thing is when you go online to complain about your kids. When you go on Instagram and YouTube and say, X, Y, Z about my kids, it's been a hard day, now I need some wine. That's what makes it damaging. Sharing every little thing about your life that doesn't need to be shared. No parent needs to complain about their child and then say, I need some wine now. That's not appropriate and should not be shared online. If you haven't heard of Dr. Ryan over on TikTok, you should definitely go check him out. He is doing some really good work. He has some really good information on his account. Right here he says, we need to continue advocating for laws protecting youth on the internet. Dr. Ryan interviewed Lou and one of his first questions was, a lot of family vloggers say, well, now we have a lot of money. We can set our kids up in the future. We can send them to college. If you had a million dollars, would it be worth it to have your face out there? And Lou said, no. The amount of times I spent in a really dark place because of it will never be worth it. Lou also goes on to say in this interview that kids are not able to give consent at such a young age. Dr. Ryan asked if there's one piece of advice you could give family vloggers, what would it be? And Lou said to set boundaries and get therapy for the entire family because you will definitely need it. That was such a great interview. Dr. Ryan is doing some really good work, really respectful work over on TikTok about the whole family vlogging, exploiting your kids debate right now. Go check him out on TikTok. Also go check Lou out on TikTok. Lou is one of the first kids to come forward and speak about this. And we are going to see a lot more of this, I believe. A lot of these kids that have been exploited online are growing up and we are now starting to see the ramifications of exploiting your kids online, of putting all their personal information online, of sharing too much. Lou's mom didn't post their information on YouTube. There were no videos of Lou's childhood. It was all pictures. So imagine if you're on YouTube and you have all of these videos and more personal private moments shared because your parents have all these videos of you. It's even more damaging with videos versus pictures. I personally want to thank Lou for having the courage and the strength to speak out about this topic. And I encourage Lou to keep going, to keep spreading awareness, to keep talking about the experiences from childhood, to keep making people aware of the ramifications of exploiting children online. It's so important. I think Lou's doing a great job over on TikTok. Go check out their account. It's called Through and Lou. I will leave a link down below. My final thoughts. We still have a lot to learn about child exploitation online. We heard firsthand from Lou today about their childhood experiences and how that affected 
their adulthood, but it won't be the same for everybody. Everybody situation is unique and they will have their own experiences. So during this process, let's allow family vloggers to make changes, to come out and say, okay, I know better now, I wanna make changes. And a lot of people have done that. And I'm also going to do stories on family vloggers that are saying that and are doing that. And I have, I have a few on my channel that have already come out and made changes. Every family vlogger is not bad. And every family vlogger should not be canceled. I think we should give them the space to make changes, to grow as a person, and to educate themselves about this topic because we're all learning right now. And if we continue to demand certain things of family channels, they're going to resist. They're not gonna do it, they're adults and they wanna make their own decision. So let's keep talking about this. Let's keep bringing all of this information to the table. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.